Good morning, it's so nice to see you.
Yeah, go ahead, guys. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your goodness. We thank you, God, that you are present. We thank you, God, that we can trust you in all times. We thank you, God, that we can be secure and hopeful. That, God, you are always with us in every experience and every moment. And, God, I pray right now that we would experience your love, that we would experience your grace and your mercy. God, that we would experience all the wonderful things that you want to do in our life, that we would experience true gratitude. And Lord, I pray right now for those who aren't here, for those who are struggling, for those who are dealing with sickness and illness. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them. Lord, I know that there are several people here this morning, people that are not, that are facing, uh, has, have experienced a loss, a very real loss. I pray, God, that you would comfort them as well. Lord, strengthen them. Help them to find the solace that they need in you, the peace in their heart that they need in you, Lord. You are such a good God. I pray that we would discover that more and more in every moment. It's in your wonderful name we pray these things, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, Todd, if you don't mind, if you could turn the monitors off. There's a little bit of hum back here. Thank you. Good morning. A couple announcements this morning, just before we forget, uh, the turkey drive is on, and at Town Hall, we committed at least 25 turkeys to be delivered to them, so I need those turkeys in by next Sunday. We have about a dozen already here, okay? So you've got a week, and they are still 98 cents a pound at the Walmart in Gorham. I was there yesterday, so get your turkeys. Shaw's what? Shaw's this week. There you go. So check check your circular. Cir yeah, that thing. <laughs> oh, it's hard to make announcements after singing. Um, get your turkeys here. Also, if you want to drive, I do not have the information yet. I'm waiting on Jean to get back with me about delivery times. It will be early if you want to make deliveries. It's usually less than 30 people. But if we separate it by towns and have X amount of people go to such and such town, that really helps. So we can send like five people over here, five people, you know, you deliver to five people over here. Make sense? That will help. Liberty is going to throw sign-up sheets at you so you can sign up for those various things. A couple other fun announcements for you. On the fourth Sunday of the month, and because I am just so together, I forgot that sign-up sheet. The November 27th, 27th yep. we are going to have Vermont Teen Challenge yep. in service with us, which is just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. So those of you that have experienced this group, this is a really exciting time for um, those that have overcome addiction to come and share their testimonies with us and things that they have gone through and how they've overcome through Christ. And they're going to stay, and we're going to have lunch after. So all your turkey leftovers are brilliant. I'd love to see that in some creative casserole because all your families are already sick of it by that Sunday. So get creative. Yeah. And the following Sunday, we have a special treat. It's December the yes. 4th. Yeah. We are going to have an evening event. Oh, my gosh. Mark 219. 209. Mark 209. Have you guys have ever seen Mark 209? They, um, they contacted us, and they want to have a Christmas concert here. So, so. we are going to be hosting them in yeah. concert. Yep. We're waiting on the flyer to get here, so we, we should have that soon, and uh, that we'll be here. So how yeah. wonderful is that? With that being said, I really need a couple people that feel confident in the parking lot, doing parking lot detail for cars. Yep. That is not me. I have vests, and yes. I will need some adults, ad adults, uh-huh, um, <clears throat> taller adults, Dennis, joking. Anyways, we do need some parking lot attendants, making sure that we adequately use the space that we have for that evening as we do expect it to be a well-attended event. Mm -hmm. And I am working on talking to Fish and Game for any overflow parking that we may need as well. Yeah. Okay? Everybody got it? Yes. Yay! Children, you can go downstairs with Miss Jen.
They have a special extra Sunday today. I told you my mailboxes were special too. Okay. Um. Anybody that saw the mailboxes like strapped to the reflector this week, I promise they are being repaired. Parts repaired. are on order. Yes. Road salt and dirt eats things. I mean, literally eats things. When they haven't been hit by something. Yes. That mailbox has been hit at least three times since we've lived here. Probably more than that. Um, just real quick, uh, for those of you guys who are here this morning, as I say each week, there's an offering basket in the back of the sanctuary. You guys can give that way. Also, um, you guys can give online through our Tithely account. Those of you guys who are watching online, there's a uh, link in the video description to be able to get there. Um, as it stands right now, be praying that it happens, but as it stands right now, they will begin to break ground for our leech field next week. So this has been, yes, this has been a long time coming by the grace of God. The two opportunities that we had at our home for there to be a backup of some kind, I don't need to go into more detail about that, uh, my wife was able to catch it um, before it happened. Not physically, Not physically catch it. Um, just, you know, there, yeah, we won't go into great detail, but the yard begins to produce an odor of some kind, and there's some other things that happen. Anyway, so um, by the grace of God, we will... Yeah, okay, yeah, she didn't smell it, actually. Yeah, she kind of walked. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, so they're supposed to start next week. Again, um, everybody who's given to that project, everybody's helped and supported, huge, huge, huge thank you. We've not been able, we would not... We would not be able to do this um, if it wasn't for you. And uh, this has been a long time coming. God provided opportunities for us to fix it temporarily so that we could bring in what we needed in order to pay for it out of pocket. And we're going to be able to do that, and that's incredible. Um, also, just real quick before I move on any farther, I know some of you guys have been praying for Linda Way, um, who's in the nursing home. This morning, early, early, early this morning, she passed into eternity. Um, thank you guys for your prayers. And uh, would ask that you guys continue to pray for uh, her family. There's a lot of dynamics going on there that I won't get into. But uh, Kim, her daughter, needs a lot of prayer, a lot of preparations that are going to be happening from this point forward. Uh, Linda has had a pretty strong battle for some time. Some of you guys know her and have known her for a while. And you know some of the struggle that she's experienced in life. Um, the times that I did pray with her, that she was cognizant, aware, um, the the last time I was with her, she was so aware, and she was so ready, and she was so prepared. And uh, she was just really holding on to the promise of eternity, the hope of heaven. And um, so we just will continue to pray. And from what I heard this morning, there have been a couple of other losses that people in our church have experienced. Um, and people around, you know, uh, death is real. None of us are getting out of here alive. That's just the truth. And so we need to continue to pray for people. We need to pray that they discover Christ and that the promise of eternity is their promise too. Um, I can't imagine facing death without that promise. I don't want to. And so let me pray again before we get into this message. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you, God, that you are with us in all times. Lord, that we can trust you completely. Lord, I pray that... Uh, families that are dealing with loss this morning would experience your graciousness, your mercy that comes fresh every day. Jesus, that they would be uh, overwhelmed with your love and that your, uh, your strength, your um, encouragement, your compassion would give them exactly what they need. They would give them exactly what they need in every single moment of what they need to do, the plans they need to make. Lord, I pray that comfort would come to us today, too. And Lord, I pray that as uh, we proceed this morning, as I share about gratitude, Lord, that you would use me as an instrument to encourage people. Lord, I thank you for, I thank you for humbling me, Lord, your servant. 
And I pray, God, that every word from this point would bring glory to your name. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we're talking about transformation. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. You know, when, when, um, when people lose someone, sometimes we think that it's like a family experience. We don't always realize that it's community, people around that experience that loss, too. Um, very personal. Thank you, Paula. Um, so we need to ask ourselves today what will truly satisfy the desires of our heart. We talked about this last week as we were pursuing answers about how to be grateful. We talked about entitlement. We talked about gratitude. We talked about complaining. We talked about how gratitude is supernatural. We talked about the battle between griping and being grateful. We talked about how our world seems to produce this attitude of expectation, this attitude to demand things, this attitude of just assuming that we deserve things. And not realizing that what we have in this life or what we experience in this life is indeed a gift. And we need to look at things differently. And so this morning, though, I want to talk to you about transformation. I want to talk to you about the things that happen in our life when we experience true gratitude, when we experience true gratefulness. If I could make a statement, uh, the problem is our hearts can be black holes of discontentment. Devouring relationships and possessions all while screaming, I need more. Some of us are always eating, but famined. Always drinking, but never quenched. We need God's help because gratitude goes against the inclinations of our deceptive hearts. Now, this is a hard truth to accept. This is a hard truth to accept because we face moments where we just like, I want, I want, I want. And it becomes this thing that goes into our heart and it creates void. It, it just, it's like we, we consume people, we consume possessions, we consume so much and we eat and we drink and we go after and we only find ourselves struggling with starvation, struggling with thirst. It's like nothing takes care of it. Because our deceptive hearts assume that we've got something better in mind. Isn't that what Adam and Eve did in their pride? They thought that they had a better idea of what was going to satisfy them than what God had said. That they thought that this fruit of this tree was, was uh, desirable and looked as though it tasted good. And even though God said, don't do that, don't, don't go that direction, don't, don't eat of that tree. They thought that they had a better idea. They thought that they knew what would satisfy, what would bring them joy what would bring them what they needed in this life they thought they knew better and we struggle with that because we are discontent by nature we struggle by nature we want and want and want if i could say it very clearly and honestly this morning living in ingratitude is a hell that we have made for ourselves it just is it just is and so like i, I preached on uh a sermon series called Grateful a number of years ago, and I see some overlap here. And so I would ask that, that you allow some of this overlap that might happen to be a reminder, because here's the truth, okay? We say that Thanksgiving or this time of year, the holidays are here. I mean, they're already putting Christmas stuff in the stores. Um, I think there was Christmas music that you guys in Walmart, when you went shopping, I'm ready, let's go. You know, like I'm excited, and I don't know what's going on outside, because it's like, hey, wait a minute, it's spring again. Um, you know, like fall's coming, <laughs> joking it's not coming anyway so like so like we're experiencing a little bit of a spring we should enjoy the weather for a little bit longer because we all know that we're going to be griping and complaining as soon as it gets cold and the snow comes and you know like I'm still trying to figure out my wife and I were talking she's like so how are you going to do this this boot thing when it gets when it snows outside and and we were talking about childhood you, may, you guys remember bread bags when you were young and like like you know your boots were going to leak so you put bread bags underneath you know, we're thinking like there's not a bread bag big enough for that. So, um, you know, we have all kinds of ideas and theories. But um, anyway, anyway, um, the snow is coming at some point. I don't know when. 
but we need to be grateful for all the weather. We need to enjoy this as it's here, okay? We need to experience that. But, but like this time of year, though, like Thanksgiving, like we, we experience gratefulness. We're like, oh, it's that time of year. And then we engorge ourselves with everything we want. We consume and consume and consume. And like this society, this world has caused us to corrupt gratitude by getting us to focus on other things. We're like, oh, I'm grateful that for this year. I'm grateful for all the things God has given me. I'm grateful for so much. I'm going to eat until I hurt. That's how I'm going to show my gratitude. Or at Christmas time, like, I'm going to go in debt for my children and for whoever. That's how I'm going to be grateful. Like, this world, like, Oh, it's so frustrating at times because I feel like people are so consumed. They're, they're so consumed with gaining and grabbing and getting. They're like, oh, it's, you know, it's Black Friday or, it's, or whatever it is. You know, it's Cyber Monday, all these different things. I mean, people are opening earlier and, um, you know, to try to get us to consume, consume, and consume. And the truth is, is that only feeds this monster of ingratitude. It only feeds our desire for more. It only feeds our cravings. Like, I can't tell you the amount of times, even as a child myself, where I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. I shared this last week. I wanted something so bad, and I got it, and it wasn't as great as I thought it would be. Like, we, we face that in life. It could be a, a thing that costs money, or it could be a place. It could be a relationship. It could be anywhere. Like, I've got to get to this place, and we just go and go and go, and we get there, and we just consume. We hurt people. We do whatever it takes to get to that place, and we get to that place, and it's like, oh, that's not the greatest. That's not the greatest. Hey, you know, that, that, that's not fun, you know? And so 1 Thessalonians, as I read last week, chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. Or this is, the will of, this is, this is uh, God's will for those who belong to him. And we need to realize something this morning. All right? We need to realize something this morning. That, that when God tells us to do something... When we are told to do something, when we are told it is God's will, it requires effort. It requires energy. Like, God will supernaturally create gratitude in us, but we are called, we are told, it is a mandatory expectation. And some of us, man, it's like, I'm going to be grateful. You know, we like walk around in misery like, I'm grateful. God, by, by the grace of God, by, you, you demanded of this, you know, expected this of me. So, you know what, I'm going to find great gratitude in every moment. You know, we force ourselves. That's why, you know, that's why the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Like, we shouldn't give out a compulsion or because we have to. It should be something that is born naturally within. We know that. All right, the Ten Commandments, for instance. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't, I mean, like, it's a list of don'ts. All right? Why does God provide don'ts? Because he loves you. Why does God provide do this or do's? Because he loves you. If he tells you that it's necessary, it's necessary, that it's mandatory, that it's a requirement, that means that there is good in it. If we are told that this is God's will, if we are told that this is a demand of God, it's not because God's like, be grateful, jerk. You know, like some of us are, you know, like we're after our kids like that. We're like, what's wrong with you? Show some thanks. Jeez. Like, God's not up there, like, you know, ready to pound us in a minute because we're not grateful enough. God's like, look, be grateful. Trust me, it's worth it. Be grateful. It's going to be good for you. It's going to feel good. It's going to change you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to change the way you see the world around you. It's going to change the way you see your life. So just some, just some questions, okay, as we, as we ask ourselves, um, are we truly grateful? Do you more often remember God's blessings in your life or forget them? When things don't go your way, do you typically respond in gratitude or grumbling? Um, would you say that uh, you, tell God, or you tell God thanks or you give God thanks daily or less than daily? Would you describe yourself as more content or discontent? Do you often tell others reasons why you're grateful or rarely talk about why you're grateful? When you see things others um, have that you don't, do you rest in what God has given you or do you struggle with jealousy? Do you more often find things that are right and praiseworthy or what's wrong and needs to be complained about? All right. If, if, um, if you were to list the reasons for gratitude, would it be a long list and easy to come up with things to give thanks for or a short list and hard to 
uh, think of things, many things. Would you, I mean, like, would you be able to come up with more things that you're ungrateful for than things you are grateful for? Do you, um, do you have a, a way of intentionally recording reasons for your gratitude, or, or do you have a way to intentionally record reasons for your, uh, your ingratitude? Uh, would those close to you, here, here's, here's a personal one, all right, this gets personal, would those close to you say that you're a grateful person or a griping person? Like your family, your friends. You know, like um, y- you, you ever experienced in your life like the desire to withdraw with some, from somebody because there's, there's constant negativity? All right? Like if people are withdrawing from you, maybe it's time to do some look inside. You know, like if you're the person who's being abandoned, you might need to take a look at your life. And I mean that in love. I'm not telling you that, you know, like it's all your fault. Don't, don't misunderstand me. All right? Take a look. If... If it's their problem, it's their problem. But seriously, like, take a look at your life. Some people don't like to be around people that whine all the time. It's like, is that all you talk about? You're exhausting. Like, you've been there before, right? I don't want to talk. I, no, I'm done. You know, like, I'm going to dodge you in the, in the stores. I'm going to ignore your phone calls. I'm going to act like I don't see your messages on Facebook or whatever. You know, um, you know I just, No. Uh, nope, I'm done. I am so done. We've all been there before. We've all been there before. Don't be that person. Don't be the person who looks for moments to be, you know, just to have contempt. As I said a minute ago, living in ingratitude is a hell that we have made ourselves. So if giving thanks is the will of God, if it's the will of Jesus, then there's a reason for it. And so I'm going to give you guys three points this morning. Number one, gratitude is the key to physical, uh, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. It just is. It makes you better as a person. Like we're like, you know, there's, there's science that talks about this. All right. Doctors, physicians, scientists, all that. They've done these complicated studies to, to find out, like, are grateful people happier? Do grateful people ling- live longer? Do grateful people deal with less sickness Do grateful people sleep better? Yes, absolutely. Then do griping people, complaining people, people that are ungrateful, people that struggle in so many different ways. Is their life worse? Is their life more sick? Is their life uh, dealing with more disease? I'll tell you right now, sincerely and honestly, I've seen people just uh, in misery walk themselves towards sickness and disease, walk themselves towards pain and suffering, walk themselves into places of depression that, where they've just fallen apart. And this is not just like, this is not just a this world thing. I mean, the scripture talks to us about this all the time. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it tells us, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. It is a gift to you. Gratitude just makes us better in every way. And you can never have too much of it. You can never have too much of it. You see, grat- grat- uh, gratitude helps you sleep better. It increases your um, optimism and your happiness. It, it improves feelings of connection in times of loss and crisis. It, it increases your self-esteem. It creates energy. It even strengthens your heart, your immune system. It even decreases your blood pressure. Like some people, man, they walk around so ungrateful, so mad. It's like not even necessarily an anxious thing. It could be an anxiety thing and a stress thing, absolutely. But some people walk around so ungrateful about things that it just creates issues with their blood pressure. Gratitude improves emotional um, health and, and even academic performance or intelligence. Gratitude expands our capacity for forgiveness. It decreases stress, anxiety, depression. Gratitude even helps with our headaches. Gratitude can even be a dopamine increase in our life. It can just, it, it, it does so much for us. 
That's why God says, be grateful. Be grateful. What is faith without gratitude? The reason for our faith will eventually be forgotten, hardening um, into ritualism that's hollow and ineffectual. It's like, if you don't have faith with gratitude, it's more, you're more than just bland, okay? You're more than just bland. It just, it's ritualism, and it's hollow. It's ineffectual. It doesn't change anything, and it doesn't change anybody around you. It's just, you're just miserable. You're just miserable. And the Bible tells us, Paul is speaking. Paul would know by example. Like Paul, like seriously, locked in jail, beaten, abused, cursed at. Like all these things happening. Paul could be like, oh, I wish I was like, you know, that guy on the other side of the sea. Look, he's got this big church move and things are happening there. Look at how great it is, you know. Uh, he could have complained about everything. And I know that there are certain things recorded in his, in his letters and there are certain things recorded about Paul. I'm sure he had his moments. But Paul is like, look. You pray, but he adds that in there. He's like, look, if you're anxious or worried, if you're anxious and worried, pray about it. Pray about it. With petition, all right, pray, pray and petition, pray and seek God, ask God. But then he inserts that word with thanksgiving. It's like, yo, pray, seek, ask, request of God. Like, God, I need your help, but do it with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, God's there. Thanksgiving, God's with you. God is there to help you. God is there to strengthen you. I, someone said it this way. Um, negative experiences are like Velcro and tend to stick to our minds. Whereas positive experiences are like Teflon and more readily slip away. That's just the real. So like gratitude changes us. It changes us physically. It changes us emotionally. It changes us spiritually. Gratitude makes us different. It's, it's powerful. Number two, gratitude anchors us in today. God wants you to experience the joy and blessing of the past, and he wants you to look forward to the things that are coming, but we often don't see right now. Oh, I miss the good old days, or I'm hopeful of what's to come. I miss the good old days, and I'm hopeful for what's to come. There's a reason why Hebrews 13, 8 tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he's the same today. Yes, he's the same as he was yesterday. And yes, he will be that way forever, for all eternity. All of those experiences that we experience that make us grateful for him, we will experience forever in heaven. But we cannot miss today. We cannot miss right now. The blessings that we have right now in our life. Gratitude anchors us in the now. Ecclesiastes 7.10 says, Don't long for the good old days. This is not wise. It's not. Don't get stuck there. I know. Like, I've experienced that before. I remember when things were this way. I wish they were that way. You know, like, or I'm, I'm longing for this future event, for this future thing. Everything will be great. I'll be grateful then. All this work, all this effort, all this diligence, all of that that I've given myself all these years, I'll be grateful in the future. I'm just going to get to it, grind hard today, make it happen, and then in the future I'll be happy. No, we need to see the things that are happening right in front of us. We talk about our retirement or when our kids are gone. We talk about what it'll feel like when all of this that we're experiencing right now is over, when we have free time to travel more, all the things we hope for. Many eventually delay their own happiness by dwelling on past events or by waiting for future ones. You just delay it. It, it just pauses it. It keeps it from happening. It keeps us in this place where um, we're stuck. And we, we need to look at the things around us. We need to plan ourselves for a minute to see what's going on in our life. We need to, we need to stop for just a second. That's why I was telling you uh, last Sunday. It's like, like engage, your, your, you know, engage your senses. Stop and smell, touch, taste, see, you know, feel. Like, get yourself in a place where you can, for just a minute, pause, stop, and hold. So that you can get the sensation again. You know, that, what, what it, stop and smell the roses. Well, there's not very, very many roses. And I know that we live in an area that manure can be very strong. You know, we can always tell when they're spreading the field. Seriously. Okay. Okay. But, like, this might be a little bit... Uh, but you, 
you guys realize that we got sewers and septic systems? Like, we're not digging holes in the backyard. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, we need, things, we need to be grateful. Like, yes, I know that when, that when that smell comes, you're like, ooh, that's nasty. You know what? Thank God it's nasty over there and not at your place. Seriously. Like, we need to anchor, anchor ourselves right now. We need to realize what we have to be thankful for in the moment. I was talking to a friend this week. He was praying for me about what was going on and, and my frustration about this thing, about having to use crutches and, and a scooter and not being able to walk and on and on and on. And, and uh, this friend of mine, his dad, uses a walker. And, you know, you know they were talking and, and um, you know, his dad just said to him, he's like, look, I can't imagine, like, uh, and I'm not going to get it, the words exactly right, but, you know, think about people that, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, I don't got walkers, right? You're in a wheelchair. You're, you're bound. You're not able to move around. You're not able to do things that you can do because you have canes or walkers or, or you know, like you're not permanently maimed. You know, like, like see things for what they are. Notice things for what they are. Notice what you have right now. Notice and recognize. God wants you to remember, to reminisce of his goodness and his faithfulness in the past. Yes, it empowers you to have faith today. It empowers you to have hope today. It empowers you to have hope for tomorrow. But don't forget what's going on right now. Right now. We've got seats. We've got a room. We've got lights. All right? We've got things to be thankful for. We got cars that brought us here. I know gas is expensive, but we got gas. Seriously. I mean, horses and buggies would be cool sometimes, but I got news for you guys. You still need to, you know, feed those horses and you need to shovel their crap too. I mean, and it's like, you know, like, like seriously, we need to stop for just a second and realize what we have. What do you have around you? Who do you have with you? And number three, gratitude puts everything into perspective. Looking to the past or future for gratitude is disorienting. When we see what is happening right now in this moment, it reorients us. It, it, it gets us right now in the moment. True gratitude helps us to experience real-time joy, pleasure, peace, and hope. Real-time. What does that mean, real-time? That means right now. And I know that this is kind of connected to anchoring you in today, but gratitude puts everything in perspective. In Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, it says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. As we experience gratitude toward God, our perspective of his greatness grows larger and our perspective of our problems becomes smaller. Our perspective of our challenges, our difficulties, our, 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 our moments where we feel overwhelmed and anxious, our moments where we're jealous, our moments where we want more, we feel like we need more to be happy, those moments where we feel like we don't have enough to be thankful for, those moments where we feel like God has abandoned us. When we see, when we experience true, honest, pure gratitude, it will make those things, those, those things smaller and the greatness of God bigger. He rescued you from Hell. He rescued you. He changed everything. And some of us in this room were messed up before we found him. We were fools. We were blowing our lives up and creating disaster after disaster. And boom, right like that, something happened, something changed, something shifted. Somebody came into your life and said something you needed to hear. And immediately you responded. And, 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 and we're just like, wow, God is so good. Wow, God is amazing. Wow, look at what God is doing. And it puts our lives in perspective. And we can stop complaining about things that just really don't matter. Things that really don't matter. And Colossians 2.7 tells us, let your roots grow down, down into him, down deep into him, and let your lives be built up in him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth um, you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. We need a stronger root system. You see, gratitude makes us th see things as they really are. Ingratitude confuses you, and it blinds you to what's happening. It just, it, it steals your attention. 
It steals your focus. Like, you just get in this avalanche of frustration. Like, I don't like this. My car is this. My job is this. My wife is this. My husband is this. My children are this. I hate this. I hate that. I'm miserable. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. And everything else that is happening, like big things, big things. And we call, oh, well, God's doing subtle things in our life. And, you know, like sometimes you miss the little things. I got news for you. When it's God and he's moving in your life, there are no little things. There aren't. It's like, oh, you know, praise God for the little things. And I understand that. I understand that sentiment. And I understand that we got to look for all things and we can call them little things. But the fact that God is involved, the fact that God is involved in our lives tells us that there aren't little things. These aren't little things. These are big things. This is a big deal. God is moving. And when we are ungrateful, we can't see that. We have an improper, a distorted, a messed up understanding of perspective. It causes us, gratitude causes us to see life through a different lens. Gratitude causes us to focus on the things that really matter. It causes, it brings stability in our life. It energizes us. Gratitude helps us to see circumstances differently. Gratitude gives us hope, joy, peace, and freedom. Gratitude will indeed even empower us. You see, gratitude will lead us to some of the most incredible moments of spontaneous joy. That's what I want. Just like, you know, just walking, minding my own business, and something happens. Like, woo, that's good, right? What are you laughing? Like, what, what's, what's going on with you? Like, why are you so happy? Well, you know what? The sun came up this morning. Seriously. The sun came up. The sun came up. Like, when is the last time we thank, the, we thank God for the sun coming up? Like, when is the last time we thank God for, for, you know, the warmth or the cold? When's the last time we thank God for the things that he is orchestrating in the universe? The scientists are, you know, they, they don't know how to explain it. They're like, well, there's this dark matter that's holding all things together. They, they, what, is that what they call it, liberty, dark matter? They're like, it's dark matter. And, and, you know, like, the universe is held together. I got news for you guys. Jesus said he holds all things together. Like, it, he, like, he's already involved. He's present. He's holding us on this planet. All right, I know it's gravity, but he made the gravity or whatever you want to call it. He's the one holding us here. He's the one holding the planets in their place. He's the one keeping the planets where they need to be. He's the one who put our, our earth on the right axis and at the right rotation so we're not cooked or frozen. Like, he's the God who did that. That's the perspective that we need. That's the lens that we need to look through. And in those moments, we can experience spontaneous joy. I know some of us, we're a little unsure on our feet, but we're on our feet. Like there are things that God is doing. And if, and if, and if we don't see them for what they are, if we lose ourselves in this place of ingratitude, in frustration, in our anger... Our disappointment with all the things that we think we need or things that God isn't doing or what we feel like God needs to be doing or whatever. We will miss it, plain and simple. We'll miss it. And it'll be awful. Like, we need to notice that God is involved, that God is participating, that God cares. I mean... We heard these verses a million times. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That should get us up every morning. Amen. John 10, 10 tells us, right, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but the, the uh, God has come to give us life and at its full. I was with a woman in the nursing home a few weeks ago was looking for heaven and at peace because of it and I go in there and, and you know I'm at the nursing home this morning comforting her daughter and I, I you know I don't want to make it uncomfortable but all I see is an empty shell that's okay because she's in glory she's not broken she's not hurting like Linda there towards the end man she struggled She's not shaking like she used to. She's not unsure on her feet. She's not struggling to breathe. For people who have had a hard time breathing, all right, people have made some poor decisions, 
Maybe you know that they've got emphysema or, or COPD or whatever. And, and, and they struggle with breathing. They can't breathe right. The, the oxygen doesn't flow in their body the same. Can you imagine walking into heaven and breathing that full breath once again? Just that, that, just that oxygen, that pure oxygen, untainted by the world. No pollution or anything. Just breathing it in for, for, the, for the first time in all its glory. Yes, things might not go as we planned. I ask my, you know, I talk to my wife all the time. It's like, when we got married, like, you know, 21 years ago, did we think that this would be life? You know, did we think we would be here? And that's not a bad thing because God is doing some wonderful things. I'm telling you, like the last 12 years that we've been here have been glorious. They've had their ups and downs and challenges. And I'm grateful for those things. But like, when we look at our life, we're like, oh, I'm not, uh, was, it, was this the plan? Did we think we would be here right now? Did we think that things would play out this well? No, we didn't think so. We didn't think that they were gonna play out like this, but God's got a plan. We can look at all the things in our life. We're like, oh, I wish it was different. I wish things were better. I wish things were improved. I wish, I wish all of, you know, like if I could just go back and change it. Stop, stop. It's a waste of your energy. That ingratitude is not only a waste of your energy, it will waste your energy. It will deplete you. It will completely deplete you. You will be fatigued and exhausted, not only physically and emotionally, but spiritually. It will dry you out. But gratitude brings spontaneous joy and peace. It will sustain life. It will bring hope. You see, gratitude, it's transformational. Gratitude will lead us to spontaneous moments of joy. And I don't know about you, but I know, I know that I know that I know that I need those moments. You just like, things get, things get frustrating and difficult. You just mind your own business, doing your own thing. And then something snaps and you're like, oh man, I forgot. I gotta be grateful today. And then you find something, something happens, something comes up, you remember something, and it's just like, whoo, it just brings this, like, vigor. It, it, it increases your, like, the intensity of your spirituality. It's like a, a spiritual boost. The Holy Spirit suddenly invades, and it just, like, it builds you up. It strengthens you. It brings you hope and peace. It, it just, it, like, builds your joy as you look to the creator of the universe and recognize that he's involved in all things. And even when we chose not to involve him, and we chose to reject him, when the world said, I'm going to do it my way. God in his love sent his son to get involved, to die, and to resurrect so that we can be free. That's serious love, and that's something to be thankful for. Jesus Christ himself called his as, as he walked towards his death, the Bible tells us that it was the joy set before him. What? What? You're telling me nails being scourged and thrown in a tomb, left for dead for three days? That's joy? Why is that joy? Because he had each and every one of our faces in his mind and he knew what he was doing and why he was doing it. It was joy because he knew that he was going to destroy death and that cursed forever and so when life here now sucks and you're just like I can't do it anymore we can look to heaven with promise and peace knowing knowing that it's going to be good this is a blink as the Bible says a, a vapor it happens fast 43 before I knew what happened some of you guys are a little bit farther than that, but I blinked and I got a college student. Like, whoa, slow down. And here's the problem with some of us. We're so frustrated and it's not too late, but we're so frustrated and so angry about things that we missed so much. We missed so much. So much. So, there's three questions. Where have you lost perspective in this life? What transformation, transformations is Jesus leading you toward today? And what are you grateful for? 
Have you lost perspective? Has your griping and complaining and your ingratitude, has it caused you to, to just, has it blurred your vision? Can you not see what's going on? Because if that's controlling your thoughts, you can't. You just can't. You're not going to see what God is doing. You will be blind to it. I promise you that. What transformations is Jesus leading you toward today? This is your moment. You got to go home and write something down. You got to think of something. Put some things in your mind. If you don't have anything else that you feel like you can be thankful for today, think of a characteristic of your Savior. Think of his love. And just think about that for a while. Think about his mercy. Just think about that for a while. His graciousness, his compassion. Just think about that for a while. Focus on that for a while. Find something. I know that it's hard sometimes, but each one of us here has something to be thankful for. We do. You guys watching online now or later, you have something to be thankful for. We have something to be thankful for. And God wants to transform us so that we can see it. What are you grateful for? Find something right now. And if you can't in your mind, Jesus died for you and he redeemed you and he promised you a place. He went there to prepare it and he's going to bring you to be with him. That's something to be grateful about. They're going to have feasts. You're never going to thirst. You aren't going to be sad anymore. There's going to be no more disease. You're going to breathe full life and air. There's no need for a sun because he's bright enough to light the place up. But his brilliance isn't so overwhelming that you have to shut your eyes. Like, you ever look at the sun? It hurts. Don't do it. But you're going to be able to look at Jesus and not be blinded? Why? Because we're going to be perfect. And we can gaze on his glory without fear. What are you grateful for? Jesus, I pray right now today that our eyes would be open, that we would stop seeing through the lens of ingratitude, that we would stop seeing through the things that make us angry and frustrated, that we would stop seeing things that disappoint. And Lord, that we would see hope, that we would see promise, Lord, that you would help us, that you would anchor us in today, that joy would come, that it would be spontaneous, and that our entire lives would be changed forever because it changed our perspective. It changed the way we saw the world and the way we see you. You are not an unloving God. You are not someone who is withholding from us. You are someone who is giving, someone who is promising, someone all good gifts, Lord, come from you. And help us to see that. Help us to recognize that. Open our eyes to that truth. And Jesus, today, we would be grateful. And there would be an immense delight, an unbreakable joy that would come. Some of us need to laugh. I mean, seriously, laugh because it's been a while. And we need joy because it's been a while. Lord, help us to narrow in the blessings that you're bringing us every single day so that we can walk through life not sapped of our energy, not broken and not dry and weary, but full of life and full of vibrance and full of joy and peace because we know who you are and we know what you're doing every single day. Awaken us, alert us. in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged, be blessed, be grateful today. Love you guys so much.